I said, as I said, it's hard to believe that 2018 is over already. The time does seem to pass quickly. And we have this new year ahead of us. We don't know what it, what it holds, but we do know that God is with us through it. Uh, last week, Dwayne and I were in Ontario, and on Sunday we went to church with Janine and Bob in Stratford, and they started with a look back at 2018, and I, I don't, I'm not going to do it exactly the way they did, but I thought it was really good, and I thought it was a good way to start a first Sunday of the new year. So I'd like to ask you a few questions. The first one, you're welcome to respond to. The second one, you don't have to unless you would like to. And the third one, I just, the second and the third one is more for your contemplation and for you to think about. So the first question is, what are you thankful for from 2018? What are you thankful for from 2018? Just throw stuff out. Just throw something out. What, what are you thankful for from 2018? Health. Good. Anyone else? What are you especially thankful for? Dale, Jonathan, what are you especially thankful for this year? <laughs> yes. Okay, the second question is, what did you find challenging? Or what challenges did you face in 2018? If anybody wants to respond, you can. You don't have to. Uh, just thinking about it. What were the challenges that you faced in 2018? <laughs> Potty training. <laughs> I'm just going to take a, a few moments. That, that I'd, I'd like you to really think about it. What were the challenges that you faced in 2018? always there isn't it yeah yeah thank you yeah. it was a strange I thought of that as I was looking at these questions it was wasn't it well as you've thought about that the third question is what challenges or trials did you face that you need to let go of and say goodbye to from 2018? And again, no response at all. What challenges or trials did you face that you need to let go and say goodbye to from 2018? And again, I'm just going to leave a pause so that you can think about that. And I want to pray as we just within the last few days have passed from 2018 into 2019. So let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the blessings of 2018, for babies and weddings, family and friends, for your presence with us, for providing what we need, for the joy and hope of living with you. And we give these blessings back to you as our offering of praise and thanksgiving. Lord, we are also reminded of the challenges of the past year. Disappointments and trials, pain and struggles, fears and failures, times that we maybe didn't feel your presence with us. And yet we know that even then you were here and that you brought us through to today. And we give you thanks for that. Help us to let go of the things you know will harm us things that could draw us away from you. Help us to give up even our desire to carry a grudge, to not forgive, to get even, our selfishness, our anger. Set us free, I pray, O oh God, to face this new year clean and forgiven, beloved children of God. 
As this new year dawns, Father, let us not be blinded by the world's darkness or consumed by paralyzing fear. May we remember that from darkness you bring forth light. From out of winter's death you give birth to life. May we remember that you are the light that gives us sight, that you are the breath that gives us life, the water that quenches our thirst. Lord God, as this new year has dawned, may we give birth to that which honours you. May we give life to what makes your goodness shine and give growth to, you, to your emerging eternal world. From the very depths of our heart, O God, we cry that your kingdom would come, that your will would be done on earth as it is in heaven. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One of the struggles I've had as we've coming into a new year is I felt kind of scattered. There are so many scriptures and so many things that have come to me that have just been, and, and trying to sort through them and decide, okay, what, what, what am I supposed to focus on? And uh, there, there's two scriptures that I want to share with you this morning. They are the ones that Carrie read earlier. The first story is the story of Enoch. I finished reading the book of Genesis a few weeks ago. And this, these verses, there's some verses that always jump out at me, and the story of, of Enoch always does. Here's this little story in the midst of a genealogy in Genesis chapter 5. And then this past week I read an article by David Gretzky, who has spoken here in the past, and it also caught me because it seemed to tie in. It says, when Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years, and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived 365 years. Enoch walked with God. Then he was no more, because God took him away. Few things that have jumped out at me this time. It was after Methuselah was born. Enoch is 65 years old, that the word tells us he walked with God. It made me think, how did he live before? What sparked a change at age 65? And a man, I can't even remember his name, but back when I was in my, early te in my late teens, early 20s, this gentleman that was into his 80s spoke at a conference and said how he, he, he wishes so bad that he could go back and do some over because he'd like to do even more for the Lord. I thought at that age. What sparked the change in Enoch at 65? Was it the birth of Methuselah? If it was, how would the birth of a son cause Enoch to have this change of heart, this conversion? And we don't know. We're not told much about Enoch. We do know that Enoch is the great-grandfather of Noah. And Enoch and Noah are the only people in the Bible that it says those words, that they walked with God. So I had to think, what does it mean that they walked with God? The law hadn't come yet. This is before the time of Moses. Jesus isn't there. What does it mean that they walked with God? If you read into the beginning of, of, of Noah's story, you'll see that this was a time of great wickedness, a time of great sinfulness. The flood is coming. Well, that word walk, as used here, refers to a, the path that someone is on, the direction or the behavior of their life. So Enoch walks with God in God's ways. He talks with God. He's going, growing closer to God. His relationship is growing. I love the way your translation said it, Carrie. I, I don't remember the exact words, but it said about a deeper relationship with the Lord. He walked with God. Enoch saw the wickedness of the people around him, and he prophesied God's judgment against them. And in Jude verse 14, it, uh, it, we, we see those words. Enoch is also remembered in Hebrews in the Hebrews Hall of Fame, the Hebrews Hall of Faith for his faith. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he didn't experience death. He couldn't be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. He was commended as one who pleased God. In Hebrews and Genesis, it speaks of God taking Enoch away. It seems that he didn't face death. 
but God just took him to be with him. It's quite amazing. You wonder how that happened, but again, we aren't told those details. But there's a powerful description of who Enoch is through the Genesis passage and through the Hebrews passage. He's not described as handsome or rich or smart, but he's described as one who pleased God and who faithfully walked with God for 300 years. And God honored him for his faithfulness by taking him to be with him without facing death. It's an incredible story, incredible account. Those words are the words that I desire for myself and for you as well that would define our lives for 2019. That we faithfully walk with God and that we live lives that please God. It may seem simple, something we are already doing. But if you're like me, there's times that you feel you fall short way too often. It's never too late to start living faithfully with God. You're never too young, you're never too old. Enoch was 65, says he walked with God for 300 years. That's more than three times our lifetime. When I was in Ontario just last week, a friend said that he prays that he will bear more fruit for the Lord in his older years than he has up till now. And I thought, that is the desire of my heart. That's the desire of his heart. It shows that he is walking with God and he's desiring to please God more and more as he continues to walk with God, the older he gets. May we resolve, with God's help, that our words will be defined, that our lives will be defined by these words. He or she walked with God. He or she pleased God. That we may walk even closer with the Lord, one step at a time, day by day, hour by hour, walking in the ways of the Lord. Doesn't mean we're going to be sinless. We know that. But we just walk in the light of Jesus Christ, as John talks about in 1 John 1. We stay close by his side, and we will grow in grace. We will walk in forgiveness, and we will live lives to, pre to please God as we walk with him day by day. May that be our prayer for 2019. The second scripture that we want to look at is Paul's request for prayer in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. He asks the people to pray for us that the message of Jesus will make its way freely into people's hearts and lives, changing them and forming them into holy and loving people who bring God's glory in the world. Where it says that it may spread rapidly, that means that, that it'll run, that it'll run with, that God's word will just run ahead. And he's praying that, that God will make its way, the message of Jesus Christ will make its way freely into the lives and hearts of people and that will take root and that it will grow. I was reminded so much of this as we listened to the video in Sunday school this morning, as we listened to the, the, the man who had been a Muslim and how he came to faith in Jesus Christ. Paul says, pray for this. We don't know the seeds that we planted. Pray it will happen, just like it did, he says, to the Thessalonians. It won't be easy. As he continues to say, pray that God will protect us from those who have rejected the message of salvation and who try to stop others from hearing it, those who persecute followers of Jesus. May we have a passion within our hearts to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, that many people may come to know Jesus no matter what. Persecution and hardship aren't going to stop Paul. They didn't stop the gentleman that we heard in the video, and they shouldn't stop us as well. And one of the reasons why it shouldn't stop us is because he continues, Paul continues, and he says, the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect us from the evil one. The Lord is faithful. That verse just gripped me when I, when, as I was reading the, this, uh, the, these scriptures. The Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect us from the evil one. God is faithful. Let that ring in your heart. God is faithful. God is always faithful. God will strengthen us. He will protect us from evil. And prayer is a powerful, powerful thing that we are called to do. 
prayer opens us up to God and to God's working in our lives and working through us. And no matter what we face, God will be with us. He will walk with us as we walk with him. And he will protect us as we root our hearts and our lives in his love. And in those verses, Paul, Paul also says that God will give us confidence to share the good news of Jesus Christ as we walk with him. We so often think it's we. What are the words we're going to say? How are we going to do it? We don't know what to say. But you know what? You can go with the best laid out words possible. It's the Holy Spirit, though. It's the Holy Spirit working through us. So we can stumble, and we can seem to flounder in what we even share. It's the Holy Spirit that will speak through the words that we share. A simple testimony of how God has been with us. And it's the Holy Spirit who will draw people to himself as we are there and available to share with others. Prayer is at the heart of the Christian life. And this was one of the prayers that was on Paul's heart. Pray for me that the gospel of Jesus Christ may run, that it may go forward, and that many may hear and that many will respond. The past few years, we've prayed the same prayers together. I encourage you to keep praying those prayers. The one from Psalms 25 and Psalm 63. We looked at a prayer, Paul's prayer in Colossians 1. And in Isaiah 6, here I am, Lord, send me. This year, I encourage you to pray Paul's prayers. Prayer from 2 Thessalonians 3, 1 to 5. In your own words. Maybe not exactly the way he says it, but as it fits for you. Paul said, pray that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored. So let's pray that prayer. Pray that the liberating good news of Jesus Christ may spread in our community, in our country, and around the world. Pray that it will spread rapidly. Pray for opportunities to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Pray for open doors and open hearts to hear. Pray for words to say. Pray that you have the blessing to lead someone to Jesus Christ this year. Even if you're made fun of, even if you are, would say that you face uh, persecution, pray for protection and know that God is faithful, that we can trust in him. And I would even say pray that this prayer becomes the passion of your heart, that you can share the good news of Jesus Christ and that people can come to know the Lord. Paul ends his prayer with, Now may the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. We can't do it ourselves. We need the Lord. We even need the Lord to assure us of his love, that we may be even more deeply rooted and grounded in God's amazing love for us. We look at Jesus and his life, his perseverance, his example, and he is an example to us to persevere wonderful wonderful encouraging words the gentleman in the video this morning shared how a family that was it was over 20 years who had shared shared bits and pieces of the gospel with him and they were frustrated because it didn't seem God was doing anything and when he got in touch with them 20 years later what a joy it was to hear that they were part of that we don't know the effect that our words can have on someone as we share what Jesus has done in our lives and what he will do in the life of other people. And so I encourage you this morning that we will share that good news. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. I look forward to 2019 as we worship God together, and as we grow in faithfulness together, and as we live our lives for Jesus in this context, where God has placed us. We don't know what God has in store for us in 2019, but God does, and his promise is that he will be with us at all times. Let's pray together. Holy God, at this dawn of a new year, we've gathered together to worship and listen. Listen for your voice calling us to something new. You are a God of newness and change, and you call us to be continually transformed. In this season of resolve, help us to be mindful and intentional about our priorities. Help us to look to Jesus as our way. 
Help us to rely on the Holy Spirit. Inspire us with a vision of the world as it could be. And Lord, I pray that, we, that you, as you send us out as your disciples, as your followers, to spread the good news of Jesus Christ in our words and in the way that we act in the world, the way we, we move and live, that we will say, see changes in the lives of people around us and that people may come to know Jesus. Lord, the desire of my heart for each of us here this morning, those of us from this family of God, that we may walk with you and that we may experience you in a deeper and fuller way, that our relationship with you will grow, our love for you will grow and deepen, that our lives will be transformed as we walk with you. And Lord, as we pray, and say words that maybe be, be, can be even hard for us to say because we're not even sure what that might look like. But Lord, as we pray those words, I pray that you would work within us and grant us opportunities to share the love, the forgiveness, and the freedom that is found in Jesus Christ. Lord, may that become the desire, the passion of our heart. Again, Holy Spirit, continue to move among us. Show us your ways, O oh Lord. Teach us your paths. Guide us in your truth. For you are God, our Savior, and our hope is in you all day long. And Lord, we anticipate what you desire to do through us in this next year. In the lives of different people here and there, in our community, and wherever we go. Lord, I thank you for the way that you have blessed us. I pray that as we go, we may be a blessing to others. And I pray for opportunities to share the love of Jesus as we go about our activities this week in our words and in our actions. In Jesus' name, amen.